between me and you yeah anything anything under 16 or 17 even you know i'm gonna mm-hmm. have it all uh so that's true so yeah i see you know what i'm saying okay awesome that's fucking badass man yeah, so you can start kind of working on that um uh, and... how do, how, can you get rid of them yeah if you right click one Okay. It'll be cool. a delete. Okay. You can just delete it. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna clear all these old ones. Out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. Beautiful mouse. Yeah, that should really help. Because uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's like five different things. I mean, four mm-hmm. or five things basically. Right, and that's. Uh... <laughs> it's like, and there, and some of them are limited resources. Only have like two or three of those. Some of them I have like four of them. You know, it's like they're not all gonna be there. Um, right. Can you put the? What about the uh, the the last one? Would be the one that might be tricky, like the great weapon master, would be the what's it called? Uh, my, my veteran strike. Mm, mm-hmm. That should be able to go down there. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And what you can also do is that when you open your sheet like this, if you go to that attributes page, the first tab. Hmm. Um. You can you can assign things to be favorite that will then just put them there on that front page for you. So I like go back to your features. Oh yeah. And sure. um do like second wind, for example, or or action surge is the one. You can do add favorite and then it will have it there for you. So if like for your yeah, main I things know. you can have them here and then and then you can dig deeper into your features if it's something that's like a little less routine. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll probably what I'll try to do is keep the things I forget about here that are like second wind. <laughs> right, <laughs> you know, right. Just to remind you. Down here, I'll have my series of events. You know, it's like, right. yeah, I know this one might, I can still do all three of these or whatever. But these uses might be handy too. So I might put them here too, right? Yeah, I'll just to, all, all or, your, right, all exactly. Yeah, all your, no, uh, your resource stuff. Yeah, I'll probably have to Hey, that's awesome. Yeah, that's that should take care of it. I might not have it already this we get in a fight this time, but for sure, for sure. I'll, I we won't have any of that. It's something to uh, just to begin kind of working towards. Ace Utah Hockey Club shirts. <laughs> Fucking out. It's pretty dope. Oh. Next year they'll have an actual name. I don't know. I kind of like Utah Hockey Club. It gives uh, Washington football team vibes. Yeah, exactly. I hate <laughs> <laughs> this, we this are merch the... actually doesn't look terrible, but like the jerseys look really bad. <laughs> the That's jerseys funny. don't even have the like. They should at least have the outline of the state if you're going to be like Utah Hockey Club. They don't even have that. Hmm. It just That's says Utah. Yeah, like your shirt. Yeah, exactly. Look at what you're wearing. Like the literal shirt that they made, they can just put that on a jersey. <laughs> you know? <laughs> They've already done the work. <laughs> so dumb. But it says it's just it's just like Utah. That's all it says. And diagonal. I think it's because Utah suffers from having a very boring shape. <laughs> I don't know, I like the shape of it. It at least I, has the little tail. To me to me, whenever like you get like Oregon or something like it's a unique shape, but it's like I don't. It's it's so random. I don't know. It's not like a <laughs> Texas. Obviously, is a very unique yeah. Texas shape. has like a super yeah, unique. It's S tier. Yeah, Texas yeah, and maybe. Florida. Uh huh. Like yeah, but that one's a penis. So California. <laughs> it's pretty do- dongly. Outlines on a lot of stuff. Hey, Colorado and Wyoming have some pretty Dude, pretty <laughs> sad ones. Yeah, Wyoming's got a pretty cool one. Literal square. straight square. <laughs> so sad. Not even like a little jog anywhere. Like it's straight up Mm-mm. just a square. Yeah, it's so boring. You're just a hater. Just a hater. <laughs> <laughs> I think in the simplicity of the shape of the state, though, it makes it easier to put on like business signs and stuff like that because it's not, it doesn't crowd it. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of like Utah stuff. I actually didn't know that Utah was as like into their state. Not as much as Texas, but yeah, 
You go to some I mean, states and they're just like, I don't give a like. Why, no one in Wyoming is like, hell yeah, I live in fuck Wyoming <laughs> pride, baby. Like no one ever in fucking. Does I that. I would bet money against that. Maybe some rural people who've lived there their whole lives. <laughs> the true Wyomingite. They're like eight generations into a farm or something. I kind of forgot that uh, Andrew's not going to be here this week either. Yeah. But I think I think it's just true. Um, you'll see that we went back character sheet. I know they're not as sexy, but um, the ones before got broken in this newest update oh, which is funny no. because they are uh it's the official feat so yay but the uh, the buckets like the way that i I've, I've divided y'all sheets up by like where you get your your abilities from that uh that broke in the new sheets and because you are such a high level and you have so much shit i was like oh, i think honestly this is, this is probably actually better. easier to navigate like it's uh <laughs> yeah it's not as sexy but i think just like as far as a sheet goes it's like like so much more organized and easier to navigate <laughs> hopefully hopefully with uh i just realized oh i didn't do yours um hopefully with the new half version coming out they'll like actually make the sheet a little bit more usable because i think even pop out works out with this or is it didn't with the other me, one David, but i prefer this sheet no no i i don't hate you i i kind of agree like whenever i went back to it and i was like and i was like damn this is like so much easier just like from like a i kind of forgot organizational like how much yeah this was like i, I and uh, even i was still like not able to find saving throws very easily <laughs> in the other one. yes i yeah. always hit ability checks every time yes it just it just i mean it was cool looking but the the sad truth that y'all didn't know is that those new sheets only updated for player characters so like for all monsters and everything on my end i never use them <laughs> um because they weren't released wow. yet <laughs> so i never even like i only saw them working on y'all's sheets but it's not as though no, I um, hated it. I was super familiar. So, unless some kind of massive upgrade is done to the new ones, we probably just won't go back. Um, wow, because there's really not any good Easy reason to. Too. Like, the icon tabs, yeah, like, aesthetically yeah. look nice, but I would always be like, wait, which one was this one? Oh, spells. Which yeah, one like, one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool looking, yep. but as far as, like, practicality, which is, like, probably <laughs> the most important part of it, <laughs> it's like. Especially because it's like, we play once a week, so it's like. You memorize it, and the next week you're like, wait, which one is this one again? <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, once a week's more than most people play. <laughs> yeah, true. Every other friend of mine that's been in a D&D group, they're like, man, we're lucky to even get together, like, once per month, where everyone's scheduled Jesus work Christ. Out. I don't even remember what happened. No. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not you recording them, you know? Like, they don't even have the recordings or anything to go back on. Like, they just straight up were like, fuck, I don't remember. <laughs> Yeah, we're lucky we have our own archiver. Yeah, true. It uh, it opened you know a lot. What? I just thought one day when I'm like 60 or something, I'm gonna think back on it and I'm gonna go back and watch some episodes of it. You know? Uh dude, that'd be cool. We all 60 and old and shit. Just, just like <laughs> listening to this shit, you're like, <laughs> yeah, nice. exactly. God, man, he was a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you ran, you randomly fucking message me. You're like, hey, you're you're stupid, dude. I was listening to fucking D. <laughs> no, it would just be Thunderface. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Thunderface, Thunderface. Uh, just because Christ. I would see Thunderface in that recording, like it would have been posted in the chat. <laughs> well, that's what's great is that whoever does listen to it, like they'll actually know what Thunderface is because like we always like randomly put it in the fucking video sometimes in the yeah. message. <laughs> I always make Dr. sure Face. that if we're talking about an image, I try to pull it up for the recording, so... <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> that is funny. Um, okay, speaking of recapping, let's, uh, let's go and recap. What happened last time? Uh, oh. we left Spider-Man. exploring. Yeah, y'all left, y'all left Mr. Spider. Um, what was the consensus after leaving Mr. Spider? We're still Confused. sus, but we're, yeah, sus. we're gonna we're, come back. We're gonna come. We're gonna back. try to. I'm gonna try to speak to a Largian. Attempt to, mm -hmm. to get a, a feel. 
Um, so we're kind of a uh, T Rex fighting the Triceratops. Yeah, yeah y'all explored a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, kind of made your way a, a little more roundabout. Y'all discovered a pass in a small valley and decided mm -hmm. to push your way up through that. Um, what was something that you discovered on your way through the pass that you left? You remember? Uh, there was some smell stuff. We, yeah, we did yeah. Some smell. a beautifully sweet smell. Um, and uh, you you kind of consciously left that behind, but uh, don't forget it. Albjorn has yet to smell it once. So. Yeah, Albjorn <laughs> mostly missed it. I'm like, what the fuck are you guys talking about? Um, <laughs> so you travel through the pass, and yeah, you saw a T Rex fighting a Triceratops, which is pretty cool. Um, and Fael destroyed the T Rex. Yeah, you intervened, and Fael got to show some of her stuff, absolutely destroying the T Rex. Oh, good. Felt real good. And, and uh, what else happened? A stork attempt. Yeah. 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 We went further than oh, yeah. Place. Yeah, so tell me about the stork, stork tendril. And then now we're all out, all out foraging for poison materials to make a poison for a gin. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, pretty cool yeah, stuff. Food, water, kind of regrouping type thing. Mm hmm. Yeah, just take an inventory of the night and. Um, moving forward the next day anything that anyone else wants to like uh cover or talk about before we head in we saw the little creatures again but they ran away once they used magic yeah they were near the temple right yeah they're outside yeah but uh did it make you how did it make you feel that they they ran away from you it made me really sad hmm. it's like it's like when you find like a little like a stray animal and you're just mm -hmm. like, oh, and then like you're like trying to like you, you have some extra food or something. You're just like, here you go, and then they run off. And you're like, mm. I, I had good intentions. I mm -hmm. wasn't trying to hurt you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's sad. Oh well. Um. <laughs> and <laughs> anyway. Anyway. <laughs> but you did see them. They're uh, they're watching. You know. You know yeah. they're watching. Um, if nothing else, then we can just go ahead and, and not waste any more time and just hop right in. Um, let me bring y'all over. Uh, I also would like to say, um, I think I mentioned this last time, I don't remember. How mm -hmm. Jorn has, he is, he is basically like suspended, like in not a rich history, but like a drying rack for the mushrooms. Mm -hmm. that we picked mm -hmm. the other, the other mm -hmm. day. So he's trying to dry out the mushroom because he wants to try to make a wacky tobacco or something with it. But I have no idea what these mushrooms are. Wacky so. tobacco. We smoke them. Because yeah. I I've yeah. been smoking mushrooms from the Underdark, so to me it's just like yeah, it's just what do you mean? It's like it's what you do. Yeah, yeah, and uh, y'all kind of made like a base camp here in this uh, unknown temple. We had um, T Rex stew. Yeah, you actually had like kind of great dinner all things considered oh, yeah. um Aslos is cooking us up a yeah nice you have all of the seasons mm, i see uh, dm kind of great cheese <laughs> <laughs> a, uh, okay. a a a scrumptious little meal mm, in this go. uh in this uh in this lost temple um, and the group of you are settling in for the night, right? Uh, we're going to say that y'all have come back from searching for herbs and other plants to create poisons with and um, are beginning that process in Halbjorn's little makeshift uh, alchemist lab here. Um, and we are about to begin a long rest. Is there anything anyone would like to do that hasn't been mentioned so far for this long rest? Uh, did we get loot from the dinosaurs or the T-Rex? You did, yes. You got. Um, let me let me share with you. In fact, I thought I did last time, but I didn't. Uh, uh, um, I'm just looking in the bag of holding. I don't see. I don't remember. Yes, yes. I will. Um, I will describe them for you. Oh wait, it's not there. Um, and then slowly populate while y'all while y'all roleplay. Um. And uh, speaking of which, I'll need some dice rolls for these. I need a 2d4 from one person and a 2d10 for another. 
with force. Nice. D10. Yes, perfect. Thank you. Okay. I'll, uh... And I'll start populating that. Basically, what you get is... Uh, here, I'll share it with you here. Money. A lot okay. of... <laughs> no From the <money>. dinosaur. <laughs> Just a lot of dino parts. Yeah, the, schmeck the schmeckles. Or the... the <laughs> Ooh, a blanket. <laughs> Axe has a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> I used so... the dinosaur hide tonight. <laughs> You just just buckle yourself. Oh, I, I, give, I give it to Froyo, actually. Yeah, she nestles in in her T Rex hide blanket. <laughs> um, it's nothing <laughs> quickly usable, but it works. Um, and and yeah, a anything else that that anyone's wanting to do before y'all y'all rest it up for the night? No, I'm too busy contemplating why the little creatures ran away from me. And I'm sad. Yeah, mm. I'm just uh, updating my notebook, getting, like doing some finer details in some of the drawings I drew hastily along the way. Mm -hmm. um, smoking some of my cheap shadow sledge mold. Yeah, I'm, and I'm and, smoking that with you, pestering to make my poison. Yeah, t <laughs> tending tending to the the poison brewers, mm -hmm. the brewer supplies, and the mushrooms, just making sure they're yeah how I want them. Yeah, you kind of have it steeped to a boil. And you're just gonna let it run overnight as you um as you let the, the the toxins basically boil out into a small vial um and and the group of you settle in for a uh for a long rest change spells if you can uh, yeah, yeah do any of your long rest funsies so um I was waiting for an encounter well, not an encounter. Um, okay. More so, a dream. Ooh. I'm really going to need those six hit points back, so thank God I got them. To... <laughs> Dude, yes. Struggle without that. Um, I thought I had... So, um... During this dream, this is a dream had by you, File, and during this dream, you you open your eyes as though you feel as though you wake, um, but you very quickly realize you are not waking up where you fell asleep. Because as you wake up, you can feel the soft brush of grass on your cheek. And you can see that when you rise, you are no longer in a subterranean cave in the jungles of Raptua, but instead in a beautiful grassy meadow. This meadow stretches for what appears to be miles. There are no trees, no rocks. No rivers, no landmarks to speak of, but just an endless, infinite, grassy green plain. And you can see that the wind is blowing the grassy blades in kind of a beautiful way. Um, the, the wind ripples over them as though there were waves of grass. And when you wake, you find yourself not wearing your armor, not with your atlatl strapped to your back but instead in a flowing white dress. Yeah, a lot of curiousness and kind of weird, but kind of, it's a dream, right? A uh, feeling of like, she almost indulges, you know, looking at herself in a dress and giggling about it a little bit, you know? And as you kind of turn around to gather your surroundings, you can see rising behind you in the long blades of grass is Thunder. And Thunder, you are also in this dream state. When you rise, you find that you also do not have your equipment. You don't have your bag, your staff, 
You don't have your good berries. And what? when you rise, you can't see it yourself, but Fael, you can see that his mane has grown tremendously. It flows in the wind just like your dress does. Like a... Like a... Uh, like a lion. That's badass. I'll say out loud. I mean, we can see each other. I mean, we're like somewhat close, right? Yeah, yeah. You're maybe five feet away from each other. Yeah, I'm doing like like those commercials you see where where women shake their head, where they just like wash their hair mm. with like some mm -hmm. amazing hair conditioner. Yeah. I'm just like, whoa. I'm just like, this is amazing. Uh, Dream Thunder. You look way cooler than normal thunder. With that mane. It's a whole thing. Uh, but this is, yeah, my dream, so I guess, you know. Your dream. <laughs> I, yeah, obviously. And I think that that would be dream. a point of confusion, exactly like this between the two of you. It's, to both of you, it feels like your own dream. What? What's, what are you doing here? It's a dream. I don't why. Why? I've never had anybody question me in my dreams. Uh, just shit happens. And Thunder, I would like for you to roll me a perception check. And Fayil, I would like for you to roll me an insight check. Well, I know exactly where that check is now. Amazing. <laughs> Thunder, as you are talking with Fayil, kind of as you look past her a little bit, you can see, in contrast to these deeply green, beautiful, lush grass, speckles of black. And you can see emerging from behind Fayil, kind of peering around these blades of grass, maybe a foot or so high, are these small little creatures that keep following you in Raptua. And here... In this dream place, there are dozens that are slowly beginning to emerge and kind of almost forming like a ring around the two of you. I, just really um, I instinctively just try to use Goodberry to give him something. <laughs> and when you attempt to cast your magic, it's not as though it fails, but instead it is... It doesn't produce good berries and instead produces like a glimmer of green kind of um, spiraling magic. It almost looks like flames coming off of your fingertips, but it's instead a vivid, vivid emerald. And as this happens, the two of you both together in your minds, or maybe from your ears, hear an echoing, beautiful humming that begins to fill the uh, the meadow of a woman's voice. A large hand. And Fail, this would trigger a a memory of yours. One that you've probably forgotten about because it happened possibly a year ago. But you've had a dream very similar to this, where you're alone, of a woman singing to you in a meadow. Yeah, Fayel's just still in my like, dream state as far as she knows. She, these little creatures have been described to her, so like she just assumes this is her conjuration of them. They probably don't even look like this exactly, and... Uh, probably just embraces that feeling. Uh, and the creatures are, are are approaching y'all now under the under the guise of this woman's voice. You can almost feel as though thunder that her voice calms the the trepidations of these small creatures. They're beginning to come up to you and kind of tugging the fur on your leg, like curiously. They are inspecting Fayil's dress. Um, you are kind of becoming one with them under the singing and the humming of this woman. 
Yeah, I'm just, I'm putting my arms out, palms up, my eyes are closed, just like fully just trying to put all my, my senses to my hearing mm -hmm. and then just allowing them to inspect whatever they want to inspect. And you hear her sing to you actual words, the two of you, and they're the same words that you heard before Fayul. And the last time that you had this vision, this um, this feeling, and I think that Thunder, you would have a um, a feeling also recur to you, not like this, not in this kind of dreamscape with these creatures or in this setting, but it's more of like a feeling like this that you have had before. Um, the same sense of possible like peace and um and recognition and um and inner inner feeling and it would be whenever you were dancing with the wildlings Yeah, I want to, uh, like, if I, if, as soon as I don't feel like the little ones are on me, like, tugging on me, I almost want to, like, recreate the dance that I danced with them. And, Fayo, you kind of watch as Thunder begins to dance. And you can see that Thunder, as you begin to, to dance the dance that you danced with the wildlings, the... The Chin was join you. They oh, all kind no of way. hop around with you. There's no way Fael's not dancing with them. <laughs> she feels like she's in a dream in a peaceful situation. Yeah, like and learn together the group of you dance. Their little bells are ringing as they hop around with you, Thunder, and you can feel the same hum in your chest that you felt with the wild legs. You can feel the the sense of nature within you and most importantly you can feel the gaze of a largian upon you and as you dance with the chin was you begin to notice that more are dancing with you more creatures you can see in the shadows of the grass large creatures beginning to emerge and you can't make out their shape as they begin to rock the ground with you. And as soon as you try to narrow your vision to see what they might be, your eyes snap open and you're awake in the dungeon. Oh, shit. I rolled to see how good I was dancing. Apparently, I'm not the best oh. dancer, but Lord, I was trying. You were trying. <laughs> and that's what Alargian cares about. The two of you wake up simultaneously in the dungeon the rest of the group is asleep you have no idea what time it might be because you have no windows um but the fires have gone out actually no it's a continual flame the fires did not go out so the the entrance hall that you're in is lit in a soft orange light as the two of you kind of gasp awake at the same time Yeah, I mean, I kind of look around, and if I see thunders up, <laughs> was that real? Yeah, I would look over. I look over there. It's like I just had the craziest dream. You were in it, man, but you had like a crazy mane. It was wild. So, okay, I wasn't sure if that was just me having you in my dream, or if we actually. Hey, what? You had a dream too. Yeah. You looked exactly yeah. the same. I, I, I thought you would. Yeah, we like dance with them in it. Yeah, so we kind of. Yeah, she'll, she'll do yeah. a couple of calls. Seems like, yeah, kind of freaking out a little bit. But like, I don't know. That was really awesome, though, too. I've had a dream like that before. That that voice. Did you hear the voice? Yeah, that was a wow. Largian. That's a Largian? Yeah. We never said anything. It was back at the old, uh, at the keep. Uh, I think. I think that's when it happened. It was before we all split up and. We went, you and, met her? We invented. 
Huh? You've met her? I don't think I met her. There was like a creature in the forest or something. I don't, I can't remember exactly what it was like. Not forest, it was like, kind of like same grasslands, but I remember that voice for sure. I can't remember really what she said though. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna lie. What does this mean? I don't know, but I'm tempted. Uh, I can all, I tell you one thing. Uh, definitely talk to her like you when you when you're talking about a spider talk about that dream stuff uh and i think also those dudes are cool right like those, those, that's what they really look like i haven't seen one yet yeah yeah i, I thought the, the they didn't like me that. but yeah they no yeah they actually they're pretty cool yeah, I, i'm, I'm definitely looking forward cool. to talking to a large if she's able to have some answers for me hopefully i definitely take it as a positive that whole dream was good right there was no evil there no good. yeah i felt at peace warm it was amazing hey david yes what did i dream about <laughs> you had a uh you had a great dream much less intense Nice. You uh, <laughs> you were actually just back in Mount Nova in pre-disaster Grand City. Um, and it was one of those kind of dreams where everything seemed like normal to you. Um, but on retrospect, very clearly wasn't. But you were like a noble of some sort. And um, you were just kind of commanding things being built in your honor. It was awesome. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> And uh, the two of you, I'm guessing, just kind of go back to bed. I mean, you. Yeah, I, yes, I, go, to, I go to bed yeah. smiling, and I do the thing where mm -hmm. it's like you wake up from a dream, and then you try to like think about the dream when you go back to sleep yeah. to like yeah. get yourself back into the dream. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll go dance with those dudes again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You uh, you try to fall back asleep. Paul Bjorn, what was that check? Uh, I am dreaming about being a professor in the classroom at the Arcane College. <laughs> <laughs> Dreaming <laughs> of work. Um, it's my passion. Okay. Passion, excuse me. Um, <laughs> and yeah, the two of you try to kind of fall back into your dream. And the last thing you can remember hearing or, or, or uh, envisioning as you fall asleep are the words of the song that presumably Alarjian was singing to you. Down, down, down by the river. And several hours later, the group of you wake up. Um, you rise, cook a breakfast, um, and when you check on the poisons that you've been working on, um, Paul Bjorn, I want for you to roll for me a... D... Wait for it... D... Uh, D12. You, um... You are able to concoct three vials worth of essence of ether. I know that you don't know what that is, so let me uh, bring it in, and then I will show you. And I'll just put it directly in your uh, bag of holding. In the bag of holding. Sure. Or I guess in your inventory. Wherever you want to put them, I don't care. Uh... Putting them in now. Like I said, you have three s servings, I guess. <laughs> Ooh. Hell yeah. I give Jen a big wink and hand those over to him. And I'm like, these seem particularly potent. Uh, what was the name of them again? Essence of Ether. Oh yeah. And I'm going to clarify here, because for some reason the Dungeon Master's Guide has clarified that it, it must be inhaled. 
Um, it doesn't say here though, so I'm gonna type it in. Interesting. So it's not something I can apply to my weapon. Right. Hey, I don't know how these poisons work here in this continent. Okay. <laughs> that's, figure it out. That's I am fine. gonna take I'll, note I'll of what, what ingredients were used. Sure, sure, yeah. You can uh, you can remember like the plants that were collected for this. Okay, well you can have that. What does this drought poison do? I mean, I think it was just straight poison, wasn't it? There's several poisons in the bag of holding. You should take Jin, because some of those you can put on your weapon. All right, all right. I'm gonna just... Yeah, and I'll clarify on drow poison. This is on. Um, and we we're always fat in drows, so we couldn't really poison. Not drow. On tea, so it was like hard to poison on tea. Mm. Pale tincture does. Uh, take that one too, it's another poison. But for some reason, the details aren't in it. What does oh, it do? It's unidentified. on T blood you can do that yeah I got that one no you can't take more than one it's tough yeah cause you yeah, should just take be. all of those I don't know how to give them to you though I think I did no you took one of yeah each. I I can uh I'll I'll adjust the uh, the populations in there so you don't have to worry about it oh my bad no no it's okay Yeah, and the uh, the group of you uh, do whatever preparations you need for the day. Um, as you uh, get all geared up. Yep. Uh, yep. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I'm like picking spells right now. No, 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 this is like fine. perfect timing for me. I'm just like, yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, did y'all, uh, what are y'all thinking? Like, there's these, I'm looking at, I'm pointing at these doors, like two doors are open, right? And two are closed or something? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It appears as though two hallways are, um, are exposed, but like I said, they're, they're dark yes. once you get a couple feet in. I'm good to go. I've got to take off a forge. Yeah, I'm good. We should probably open the doors or explore the hallways that are already open. Can we do so like magically somehow? Watch. Sorry. Uh, I mean, I'm not. I'm not voting one way or the other. I don't know if I want to explore it or not. I mean, I. It, it could be a beat down. But like moving forward still sounds right. Just keep collecting ideas of where to backtrack on if need be, but I don't know how far we're gonna get if we'll ever be back this way again. I don't know. Is there like one door that looks like more important than the other doors? Not particularly, no. Okay. David, can you kick me from Yeah. It kicked me and I can't get back down. Maybe we should split the party four ways in each party <laughs> explorers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do it quick, right? Don't go far. <laughs> well, I don't know about all that. Uh, can, uh, I, I'm going to investigate one of the closed doors to try to see if it's trapped and or locked. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you uh you kind of run your fingers along the stone and uh, you don't you you aren't able to identify any kind of traps that are on this stone door can i uh, try to open it to see if it's locked um yes you you find that the the door as you kind of inspect it further it's really like a like a stone face um, there aren't any mechanics with it. There's not like a knob to turn or anything like that. It's just a a sealed um, a sealed stone face that is beautifully engraved, kind of like the columns that you see here with like Mesoamerican art. 
is the other door of the same fashion. Mm-hmm. And just to quickly draw kind of what it looks like here. Whoops, not that. I'm still out, David. I don't know why. Um. Yeah, I don't know either. There's no you, you in here. And so this is kind of the layout that we're looking at with a door here and a door here. And then the, the large altar that the group of you saw whenever you entered, the door out, and then two hallways. Can I investigate the altar to see if there's any significance or sure. messages? Um, no. No, um, no messaging of any kind, but like I described last time, you can see kind of at the wall behind the altar is a large engraving of a, um, of a stork-like creature. Um, you can tell with how much care and, and dedication was put into this engraving that this must be of significant importance. You can also see on the altar several things that were kind of like left. Um, in worship, perhaps, or reverence. But most importantly, you can see in the center of the altar what appears to be like a... Um, uh, I don't know the word for it. Like a, a setting. like a, Almost like a keyhole of sorts. Like, a, like an insertion point um, that has nothing fitting within its groove. Can we discern like what shape? for like what kind of object needs to be inserted? I think that with your investigation check, you would be able to discern that it's not like a traditional key or anything like that. It seems as though something needs to be like placed within it to, to very specifically uh, fit the the shape and the the um, the grooves that are that are currently unfilled. And uh, Frost, or not Frostborn, <laughs> I was, want to say Frostborn, Halbjorn, um, you rolled an Arcana check? Yeah, I want to check for, like, magical presence of anything in here, wards, glyphs, and with that roll within the, the mile radius. Mm-hmm. I'm just kidding. Uh, just, uh, like, just <laughs> around the room, just checking the doors and make sure there's not, like, a magical trap or something, or... Uh, yeah, there are, you can definitely feel magical wards existing, um, not necessarily on the altar itself, but certainly, um, beyond it. A and to your credit, you can also feel that the, the altar itself, especially the, um, the insertion thing, pedestal, um, is also quite magical. And what I put together that I feel like that's just from that reacting to the doors, that's just like that's the magic that would be reacting with that. It's not like there's a like if we touch it, it'll blow up kind of thing. Hmm. I think with a check that high, yeah, you don't feel as though it's like a magical trap. It's more of like a magical, um, like a magic mechanic almost. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like a foundational magic. Well, I think if we're not going to push on, we should definitely go ask the bird village about this place. Yeah, I think there, we have to have something to gain access here, and I don't think we have it right now. I mean, we could explore the open doors while we're here, but I don't. I'm not against trying to get some more intel from the locals first. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that. Sounds good to me. All right, cool. Yeah, and the the group of you um, pack up your camp and um, begin to to leave the temple here. Um, as the group of you depart the temple for now, Thunder, you notice on the way out that the good berries that you left out in the woods are no longer there. I do like a, a sneakfully smirk because, like, I'm like, yeah. Mm. Mm, kind of a, a sneaky smirk. Yeah. <laughs> and the group of you head back out 
to explore once again. How did my mushrooms turn out, David? Whoop. The uh, mushrooms turned out pretty good. Pr pretty good, all things considered, for, for being in a temple. Nice and, uh, yeah, like a nice kind of mushroom jerky. <laughs> now, Thunder, and can you map this damn place? <laughs> <laughs> As, uh, I'm like, I, yeah. What, uh, what direction do the group of y'all go? I don't know yet. I need to. <laughs> we left. Uh, we left this one. Or wait, no, we're in here. No, no, we're in. We're in here we're in because here. we didn't. We didn't map it. Oh, we're in here, we're in here because when you hover over it, it shows a little token. Can someone screen share? I can't. I can't get in. I don't see a token. Uh, let me you kick you again. Token, but when you hover over try, it, try again, Fayol. Yeah, I'm going to get all the way out. I'm, yeah, I'm go right all the way out. Right here. I'm all the way out. I have tried a few. I am 100% certain. Let me win, David. Yeah, go ahead. Um, okay, Thunder, you um, you attempt to... Oh, shit. I rolled with advantage. Just take... Take the highest one, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll give you the highest one, whatever. <laughs> wow. I mean, even if it was eight plus seven, you get a fifteen. So that's fine. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why. I'm not used to like. Uh, fuck, oh, I'm sorry. Thank God I didn't have to roll, dude. Huh? <laughs> well, if it's anything like last time, we're gonna need you to. I I know four Ooh. four times apparently. Yeah, uh, does that work at all, Wicko? Yeah, it's still it's still grayed out for whatever reason. You, I can, I guess I, I can pick jar you right. Yeah, do it. Yeah, go ahead and do that for now. Yeah. If we know that we've mapped these areas, then we would be able to discern that we can walk down to the village, I think, right? Because we know That's... we know the rest of the stuff. Yeah, we're pretty sure, we're right? I mean, at. yeah, we look at the map, right? I mean, and we know it's, it's at the, the fork here, in yeah. the river or whatever, the confluence. So we just head towards the confluence. Like going towards the river. Down, down by the river. I feel like if we walked through down the line of the hex, we'd be able to map two <laughs> hex because we're in the middle mm. of two. Mm. No. <laughs> mm, no. <laughs> this one bugs the shit out of me over here. <laughs> A mysterious fog hovers over that uh, <laughs> I didn't realize that hex. we got our pings back until just now. Yeah. Yay. Oh, I did. <laughs> yeah, quite, quite nice. All right, that's where we're going. So, uh, yeah, where do uh, where do y'all head now? One of these two. Yeah, let's do that one. Okay. Well, that's a lot easier. Ooh, Ooh, wow. Yeah, I get yeah. two. Danny knows all flora and fauna in this whole, or Thunder knows all flora and fauna in this whole head. So, uh, the group of you, as you head down this way and depart from the temple behind you, you can see the cool art for it in the cliffside. Universe. You begin to thunder, hear the telltale sign of running water as the group of you approach the river once again. More accurately, your token's like this, as the group of you kind of stride up to the, um, the bank of the river. Th this river is a little bit smaller than the main river that you have mapped coming down from the mountains down here, um, but larger than the river that you had coming from the portal. This is a uh, this is a solid river. It's a good river. Oh, good. I guess we I'll stay on there. this side of it. Yo. It is oh, a nice river. Way over there. I think I see the crest of something. Dude, 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 does, of does Thunder get another head? And uh, the <laughs> Thunder. Yeah, uh, that was a mechanic last time, if I recall correctly. Oh yeah, there was. Yeah, I guess it you got was. to look. I think you got to see it, but not map it. You got no, to no, look yeah. it. It mapped two. It mapped two. It mapped two. Uh, did it map two? Oh shit! Yeah, we yeah. Two. yeah. Wow. DM sounds a little disappointed on that roll. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you Thunder are able to to grab a vantage point that allows you to see um, farther ahead. Um, for your fellow adventurers, what other hex would you like? to reveal as you look farther ahead. What do you think, guys? This one? Roll a D3. I think this one. Uh, I like this I one because we're going down there. I like that one. Right? 
Right, and uh, going that way. as you kind of, I like to think maybe Thunder, you climb up on a tree and you look over and ahead and you can see the river winding down uh, due southwest. And you can see where the river is winding as you follow its coast, kind of rising from the canopy from the jungles um, below it is the top of what appears to be a ziggurat. Ziggurat? Ziggurat. Oh, shit. What is that? I have no... <laughs> a structure. A village. I don't know. You see, uh, you see, uh, <laughs> Wurt Stone in, coming up and cresting above the, um, the trees. It, I think that it would be a clear indication to you of at least something of structural, uh, significance. Yeah, with full confidence, I look at the group and I say, there's a ziggurat in front of us. <laughs> oh, and importantly, I get, like, you I can also... Of, like, what is that? Is that like an enemy? <laughs> <laughs> you can see that the ziggurat lies like, on the oh, other God. bank of the river. You would have to cross the river to reach the ziggurat. How wide would you say the river is? Mm, probably seven to eight feet. So like a cat could jump it, a giant could jump it, or a Yeah, I, I could, uh... Get out my robe for me. I can get over it. It's fine. If y'all want to go that way. I can do the bridge thing, but like, I could only do that once per day, and if we need that in a pinch, that would be. No, I'll save that for the big, big rivers. Right. Okay, yeah, I just fly over it. Yeah, I fly over it too. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's an automatic too. jump. I'm right? gonna I mean, attempt a jump. I will attempt a jump. I try to like reach out to like. Get on top of the broom, but Hobbyorn just like zips across my arm. It's not big enough for and, a cat uh, and a dwarf. We're too small. <laughs> and the uh, the group of you gracefully leap or fly across the uh, the banks of the river. Um, and and yeah, you now find yourself on the other side, and um, you can also see that. And I think Thunder, you're kind of pointing it out. You're also on the other side of the kind of small outcropping that the pass wound through um mm -hmm. and you can see how the river kind of bends around this um this rise okay here do do, you wanna, can we just go straight into it or do we have to walk around the wall no 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 Th this is uh just imagery okay do we smell the sweet smell again uh roll a perception check Three eighteens. Wow. Three eighteens, and no, no one smells it. Of course. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Wait, well, good job, guys. No one roll. smells it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do it. And the group of you. Buildings get around us. The group of you approach yeah. the ziggurat. Dun dun dun. Oh. Oh, oh. dude. That's a ziggurat. <laughs> oh. It doesn't look anything like a rat. You can see that the ziggurat, as you kind of begin to approach it, um, is built up to the bank of the river. And at one point, the river probably would have been quite influential to this ziggurat town. Um. And you can see that it has a very prominent, large um, stone staircase that leads up it um, as it begins to ascend. But the ziggurat itself is monstrously tall. And from below in the vantage point, it's not as though you can see and make out all details of this structure. Ah. Uh. I guess we're checking it Maybe. out. Yeah, I mean, we, let's get close. I don't. Is there a dread? How long it would take to get to the top of that? You could get, probably get a good view. Do we get let's a sense of dread from this thing? Yeah, lots of, Sorry. lots of caution. What, what was that, Ventus? Do, do I do we sense dread from the ziggurat? <laughs> uh, more mystique. Okay. Vibe check. Vibe check. Mystique. And are there any signs of life? Um, no, not of civilized life. A lot of, um, a lot of creatures are around, but no, 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 uh, humanoids. 
Yeah, I would say, yeah, let's get closer yeah, for a better look, but not completely invest there ourselves in the treasure. I'm a funny treasure, you say. <laughs> treasure. Like and it, <laughs> as you all begin to approach the ziggurat, you can see that at its base, down to the ground, there are no openings, no entrances, no doors, or anything like that. The only thing that is prominent at its base, at each of its faces, is a stair staircase that extends upwards, um, higher into the ziggurat itself. And as the group of you begin to explore around, I would like to say that this takes like an hour of exploration as you slowly kind of wrap around the perimeter of the ziggurat. After an hour of searching, I would like for everyone to roll me a perception check. I already used my 18. <laughs> Wait on it. Hold on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There we go. Huge. I know you really needed that nine to, <laughs> to make it through the day, dude. <laughs> nah, I had it covered. Okay. You have to be patient with me for a second. So, the group of you begin to uh, just look around the base of this large structure. Like I said, it takes about an hour for you to get fully around it. And after the group of you... Um, have finished looking around i'm gonna message you individually what what you see Whoa. and we're, we're gonna get messages being like you see nothing yeah <laughs> there is a staircase <laughs> Whoa. An and water staircase. yeah plants are growing on it it is amazing <laughs> <laughs> i forgot my slinky <laughs> Uh, okay, <laughs> there's Trash. yours. Oh, yeah, before we go too far in the day, David, I cast a uh, good berry, and whoever okay. wants a good berry oh, can dude. have one and eat one. Yes, please. Here you go. Munch. <laughs> Munch. Okay. There's another one. Sorry, you speak. Wait, are you? What? <laughs> he always wants one. I mean, Jar, you probably wouldn't take one. <laughs> Jar, you just like yeah, blitzed, perfect. hammered right now. Yeah, <laughs> like perfect hung up. Wait, what? Jar, you's here? Well, he's with always. us. Yeah. I mean, we didn't just leave him at where we were at last week. Always. He's here, dude. Andrew's here. Fuck? I'm uh, scared. He's here in Ghost Spear. Are we currently standing by that area, David? <laughs> um, we'll say that like the group of you all like split up to kind of take perimeters and look around, right? And then you have regrouped um, to share your findings. All right, I can't so wait to see this novel. Y'all no noticed gonna the carving, through. right? Yeah, on the back of the building, there's a there's a couple carvings. There's a snake. A flower that looks kind of like a tulip, and a mechanical owl. Oh, I didn't get a. Uh, I didn't get that. I, I, saw, I, I got, saw a feather and a, a panther. I saw a feather, a coconut, a palm leaf, and a spider. But which side? Uh, where, is it, I was at the rear and like the base of the ruins, like the back side of them. The yeah, rear, the rear and the base. Uh, I think David's yeah. tricking us or something. No, no, no. It, it, all that means is you kind of you see them in different places around the back and the base as you circle around. All right, so let's catalog. This. Oh, so we got a snake. We got mm -hmm. a, a feather. Tulip, a mechanical owl. Do do the group the animals. A feather. What else? I saw a leaf. A cat. A, a cat. Carving. A cat. Yeah. A spider. A spider. And then I got a feather and it, and it says axe beak. And then it says coconut as well as a palm leaf. Goddamn. Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> so we have animals and vegetation. And oh, did you get that? And oh, an object, did you get that? A uh, feather? Fig leaf. A what leaf? A palm fig leaf. Oh. Saw a fig leaf. So plants. 
Okay. Oh, the owl is the only the mechanical table. thing, which is interesting. Kind of looking over at Jin, I'm like, you seeing any of this shit? <laughs> I didn't see shit. <laughs> 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 They're looking up the That's whole time. Better. Yeah, yeah y'all were looking really up at the top, not down at the uh, at the <laughs> base. Y'all were deep in thought about what treasures might lie inside. I didn't see didn't shit. About <laughs> like, I, I'm you looking you at the stairs. I got just like these images. Like I don't see uh, any of these animals on no, the no, stairs. No, we asked them, and they're like. I think that's a cat. They're looking at clouds. They're making up like shapes out of the clouds. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> kind of point out one of the steps. I think that one kind of looks so like funny. a snake if you really squint. I, I guess. What the hell do those have to do with each other? That was a penis. Uh, my, my, my feather was a parrot feather. Oh, Fuck, I think weird. it's just I, a step. I, I, and, and the cat, my cat was a panther. If that matters, I don't know if it is. What does it mean? What does it all mean? Well, we've seen multiple leaves, multiple like feathers. Kind of like riddles, right? Like you gotta go through something. So this, I didn't see any doors or nothing. Maybe we need a mechanical to bring... owl. It sounds weird to me. Uh, you think we should explore like the other sections of the the ziggurat? Yeah, it's the base. Yeah, y'all wanna? Ah, oh, this seems like a, like a whole thing though. But that's what we're supposed to do. We have no idea where we're supposed to go, anyways. So we can't turn down every... H have we been to the top of the ziggurat? No, no not at all. A... No. Should, yeah, should we go, go yeah. Let's go one. Yeah, go one tier. And yeah, they, yeah, there might be different carvings on that. Yeah, perimeter. let's go to the, the next landing of the stairs. Sure. And then go around it. And then walk around yeah. it, yeah. I got my glaive out. Actually, I got my bell out. I still have it. <laughs> Yeah, as the um, as the group of you begin to ascend, um, the the staircase to the ziggurat is long and steep. You can see that, like, kind of in this picture, that the ziggurat is separated into different levels, um, and above the level that you are walking to. But um, below the second level, I would like for everyone to roll me um, perception checks as you're walking up the stairs, as you're kind of looking up at it. All right, I'm Imagine. looking real hard this time. Imagine <laughs> this is like walking up the steep, like stadium seating at the top. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hobdorn's still trying to piece together what all of it means. Oh, shit. Okay. Um. Perfect. So, as a group of you are ascending upwards, um, now that you kind of know to look, you can see that as you gain vantage, that about 25 feet up, in the ruins, you can see that there is a, a worn relief that is carved into the entire front of the wall. This is an, an extraordinarily long relief. And from left to right, you can see several different um, animal depictions that are shown. You can see that there is an, a crocodile with his mouth open, and inside of this is a, uh, is a mouse. You can see a human um, that is prone on its back with a swarm of birds all around it. The 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 birds here are a little difficult to make out. Um, I would need another check for, for you to determine what kind of birds they are. You can see a monkey that is uh, striking a snake with a flower, like a weapon, while a bird... Um, also unspecified without a check, flies overhead the two of them. You can also see some sort of large um, cat-like creature that I would need to check for to specify walking up a staircase. And finally, you see a large serpent, a, a monstrously sized serpent, um, looking down on four humanoids. 
What kind of checks do you need for those? Um, nature, please. Dang it. Stepped away from my computer. I'm coming back. I'll roll the nature. Um, I, I want to figure out the what the birds spotting? are. This, Here, the monkey I was will, uh... using a, a plant to attack. And I'm assuming that's mm -hmm. the lily. A flower. Yeah. Let me, uh, let me type Here. this out. Here's my nature flower? check. No, he was using the flower to, like, attack something. Oh wow, my nature check sucks. That's weird. <laughs> I thought you would have picked the animal handling because I'm touching the carvings to see what animals <laughs> are. Why would you hit something with a flower? Kind of Stupid yeah, monkey. <laughs> Stupid monkey. <laughs> um, yeah, with those nature checks, Thunder, and your current vantage point, you are not able to, to make out specifically like what kind of birds they are what kind of cat it is um which is unfortunately not not very helpful oh don't forget about the serpent staring at four humans inside so we we didn't see anything about a crocodile or a mouse uh did birds can either figure them all out be... yeah did i figure out the bird oh excuse me yes yeah ventus as you um as was tried to but you know, <laughs> as was you're kind of squinting looking at them uh well ventus is actually determining what they are <laughs> um so ventus you can determine that um uh, quite a few things you determine that the um the swarm of birds all around the human on its back they are ravens um it ravens. seems it seems there. clear to you that the bird flying above the monkey that's striking a snake with a flower, that that's a parrot. And the large cat walking up the staircase is a panther. Oh. I'm I like squinting at the ravens. I'm like, I think these are crows. <laughs> no, no, as those are ravens. Trust me, I know I know my birds. I'm looking at him, looking at the, looking at the birds. I was like, "Why would you know?" No, Aslus, they're oh, clearly jackdaws. Right. Come on. <laughs> I was like, "Wait, is that because you're a bird?" Fix <laughs> the tiara and walk I, I, off. I, I just give him a, a little like smile. <laughs> Damn, I thought the birds would have been one of the some of the birds that we saw in the carvings before. No, I saw the I saw, saw the parrot. parrot twice. I saw the parrot and the panther. Well, sorry, I meant like the the axe beak, oh. and uh, the axe beak would have been one of them, not the raven. But yeah, you did see the parrot, you're right. Hmm. What kind of flower is the flower? Yeah, I was about to ask that. Uh, you can roll me a nature check. I did. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, I'm looking at another tab. Um, the flower appears to be that of an orchid damn and i would like investigation checks from anyone that is proficient in investigation damn it. wait hold am i that nope <laughs> am i that <laughs> unless i guess none of you are and then no wait in what uh, investigation? investigation okay wait if i'm ha wearing the tr and i'm Joy half is. proficient will you give it to me Sure, because Jaryu is and he's not here. Yeah. Nice. Well done. You can see as those as y'all are continuing to move upwards, right? You can see that um that three three of these carvings have um traces faint traces of paint that the other carvings don't have. You can see that it's worn and weathered. Um, at one point, it was probably vibrant and um, and beautiful, but now it is faded away due to time. You can see that the feather um, of the parrot has traces of red and of blue painted within it. You can see that the flower of the orchid has traces of orange and purple. And the snake has traces of green. I'm telling you guys, if you squint hard enough, stuff comes to you. <laughs> As I'm reading all this squint out. Squint strat? Sounds like a really complicated puzzle. <laughs> Do we... 
walked we haven't walked around this one have we right we've just walked up and then investigated that's just us walking that's just us walking yeah. up towards us cool. should walk we around. yeah this let's is just this is as y'all are kind of walking up right. um and, and one last thing as those for your investigation check as you are continuing to stare at this um this relief this carving the image of the creature striking at the snake with a flower with the bird above him it it pops out at you it, it kind of grabs your attention as you ascend these stairs you can't help but be drawn to it um and that's the last thing that i kind of that you'll notice as you're continuing to ascend um the, the stairs that you are currently on, the steps from the ground to the first uh, level of the ziggurat are 50 feet long and they rise 30 feet. You can see that as you're continuing to climb after about the first 10 feet that you are getting caught in a tangle of roots and vines and creepers that are beginning to cover the steps. And you... As you take your attention away from the um, from the relief above you and begin to kind of notice them, you can begin to feel a stinging sensation. Um, as you look down, you can see that the thorns and the spines from these vines and um, and roots are beginning to slash away at your ankles. And as you continue another five feet. The group of you are going to take four piercing damage as you can see or slashing damage. Sorry, as you can see, kind of uh, your your skin kind of begin to bleed slightly. David, before I take that damage, I mm -hmm. would I, I would try to use produce flame before like walking into like thorny pathways. Yeah, OK, could, sure. Could I fly over the thorny stuff? Um. One at a time. First, thunder. And yeah, we can say you, you notice this maybe even before you take damage. You can feel that you're kind of getting a little slashed up, right? A little cut up by the thorns. Um, and so you would try to use produce flame to to destroy them in your in your path? Yes. Okay, sure. Um, as you do that, you watch that almost as quickly as you burn them, the thorns and the roots are growing back, almost thicker than where you left them, um, creating a now almost a, a more difficult path than the one you had before. The Hydra um, effect. The Hydra effect. Ventus, as you try to open your wings and fly past over these vines you can see that whenever you try to to go over you are are kind of stopped it's as though you can't make any progress um and i don't even think you would have to check to realize that this this temple this ziggurat is magical in nature mm. guys i can't really fly over here and then as i start to start like uh, clamber through the the vines and stuff. I'm like disappointed. Yeah, yeah. I think it definitely would be disappointing. <laughs> um, because yeah, it, it's like a magical, like almost like a pillow that is kind of pushing you backwards as you try to fly forward. Uh, taking that four damage, she would kind of. I would like just kind of try to barrel through. Is it getting even more difficult? Should it's becoming even through? more more difficult and as you try to push through you will take um an additional 14 slashing damage and you're finding that your your movement is quite hindered this is now difficult terrain that you are becoming stuck in oh, all right stop. everybody stop <laughs> it hurts yeah oh and and how far from the top are we so you're about 20 feet 15 feet in, so you're about halfway. Yeah. I'm going to stay in here for a minute. Fayel, try to come back. Can you easily Hold on. come Hold back on. or no? Hold on, everybody. All right, let's I'm going to stay in here. Stay in there for, for a minute. 
It hurts. <laughs> it's, it's like really sharp. <laughs> she like dug into my thighs. So I'm going to try to take a step back and, uh, to see if there, I have the same resistance as trying to push forward enough. No, you watch as you move backwards, the vines and the, th and the roots begin to pull away magically to allow you to descend. Mike, by you, you can back up. It's okay, it's not going to hurt you. David, if this yeah, is, is game-breaking, then I won't mm -hmm. do it. But <laughs> I cast Mirage Arcane, and I can change the terrain up to one square mile and disguise it however I want, and it specifically says difficult terrain i can basically just make it go away i will if you weren't here to hear kind of what ventus discovered i'll give this spell slot back to you um but you find that when you try to magically kind of eradicate or sorry what thunder did when you try to magically eradicate these thorns and these vines you can watch that the spell works and the path is cleared for just a brief second and then they all come magically growing back to recover the path. Yeah, Fayil definitely like backwards, like moon. And, and right, like. And yeah, I think I that I um, that you, Hobjorn, would be able to very quickly kind of put together that whatever, whatever is happening here, it is not nat. This is magical in nature, um, and not natural i want to um hold my i, I want to touch my staff against one of the um thorns and i'm trying to uh cast this from my staff of um of wildlings but for some reason like when i click it it doesn't map it or maybe i'm doing it wrong what is uh, the spell uh awaken by the way, you should read that spell. It's pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> I can completely Here. change an entire Perfect. area up for a square mile. Like, if it's a swamp, I can make it a nice meadow. If it's a it's meadow, actually I can awesome. make it a swamp. And, like, it's completely a mile is real huge. to everyone that sees it. Yeah. That's so cool. Um, um, so you're trying to awaken the, the vines and the roots? Yeah, essentially, like, if, even if it's just like the one vine that I'm touching, or since it's essentially connected to its origin, I mean, you could choose however you want it to be affected, but basically just Thank awaken you. part of it. Um, yeah, as you awaken the vine, um, you watch as one of the vines does like coil and awaken. But even like when it rises, the hole that it left begins to fill with other creepers and, and thorny roots. Sure. I want to I want to speak to him. Can you? OK. We're just supposed to talk to a large today. <laughs> how, how do you speak to it? To part of the spell, it says, uh... Ah, the target also gains the ability to speak one language you know. Okay, what what language do you want it to learn to speak? Druidic. Okay. And the, the awakened vine, where its eyes would be, it points its face at you. Looking at you attentively. Why don't you want us here? And it starts speaking parcel tone. But a tonic common choose is druidic. Thanks, <laughs> bud. Well, I don't want it to overhear one of us talk about something and then they get mad or something. Can't wait to murder all these plants later. <laughs> See? <laughs> he doesn't know what he's saying. <laughs> Uh, so you should be able to read that message, Thunder. I cannot. Oh, okay, I have to scroll down a little bit. <laughs> the Oracle you read it requires now? a trial for those who wish to see them. What's the trial? And uh, would you like a good berry? Figure out. Hmm. 
They are the trial. So wait, say it again as a whole. The first statement was, we are, uh, the Oracle requires a trial for those who wish to see them. I asked, what is the trial? And their, their response was, we are the trial. And it says, Orolunga is the trial. Which is this place. I'm assuming we I, have to figure out something with these images and whatever interacts with that. And if we can figure that out, it'll make the thorns pull back and then we can get access. Yeah, obviously we can't barrel through. It got way yeah, worse. What, what was that picture of the the bird and the flower? Uh, well, there's a bunch of them. I, I'm um, not sure striking something. Yeah, there was paint on the yeah, on the, the steps. The monkey, the monkey is striking. Here, the monkey's his uncle. Uh, yeah, David, I'm gonna go it. to the one that stood out to me. What? That was the large serpent staring at the four humanoids, right? Um. Yes. Yes. Uh. Oh, they have it there. Yeah. Yeah. No, I um. I could have sworn it was the monkey striking the snake with an archipelago pair of flies. Oh there. yeah, yeah. That's what you said. Was the one that I, one that stood out attention. to me, right? Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, go like up to that one, start like pressing on it. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just gonna start touching it. It's so about uh, it's about twenty feet above you. You you can only really oh. like look at it. Um, but you can Let's look see. at it real intently. <laughs> real so intently, I will be looking. And at it does it does grab your attention. Um, like I said before, it it um it pops out at you. It says the awakened planet is charmed by me for 30 days so i okay. ask it how do we pass the trial <laughs> huh <laughs> feels a little like cheating thunder i'm just it's kidding. gonna be like it's gonna be like you've never asked me <laughs> yeah no, one, no, one's, no ever one's ever asked, asked, asked. Before. <laughs> straight asked uh <laughs> We we never had a druid come over here before. Fuck. Just it says you can't go next. I know this is all DM discretion. It can give some kind of cryptic clue. Yeah. Maybe. Ask chat. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a plant. Like it doesn't know what humanoids GPT. precisely are it doing, the, doing. It gains the intelligence of ten. So it has some intelligence. Yeah, he was still a plant when he saw humans trying to get up this thing or whatever. Ooh, yeah. Got Ooh, him. That's a wall of text. An animal's there. brother is another animal. A human's brother is another human. So who is a plant's brother? Another, another plant. plant. Yeah, another plant. I say confidently in response you uh you look for um praise from from your new plant <laughs> friend and you unfortunately receive none <laughs> no affirmation i cast druid craft right below his feet or before <laughs> below its root what if we it's a vine an <laughs> yeah. an animal's brother is another animal a human's yeah. brother is another human I'm gonna so go to the, the ground, and okay. I'm gonna start looking around for an orchid. After I, yeah. Sure. I'll also sure. look for a tulip, a palm leaf, a fig leaf. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Um. Coconut. It's a plant. So, um, I need from both of you uh, nature checks. And if you're proficient, you can have advantage. And this process oh. for searching through the the jungles, um, this takes some time. It takes you all about 30 minutes David, to kind of. There's a palm tree right here. <laughs> okay, the palm tree doesn't take very long. <laughs> but uh, but some of the others, you quickly go for a palm leaf. Uh, that one's easy. That's but uh, the two of you search for about 30 minutes through the jungles to try and find the other flowers that you're hoping to find. And neither of you are successful. You aren't able to find them not necessarily by a lack of them existing but more of a lack of you being able to 
correctly identify one. Thunder, can you use your voodoo druid magic stuff? <laughs> and yeah, yeah. I see him starting casting spell. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, 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 I get. I get. Yeah. I got slightly annoyed because I'm like, I'm already doing it. <laughs> and uh, what specific kind of beast minutes. or plant are you, are you looking? <laughs> yeah, I've been out there for like an hour. Oh, I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, um, <laughs> uh, I, I believe Azlos was looking for an orchid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking sure. for an orchid. Probably when you take a swig of your water skin after that search, um, because y'all have been out here at Oralunga now for about two hours. Um, just Oof. to give you an idea of how long this is taking. I um, not because you're doing. I need a good <laughs> berry as well. Yeah, taking some bites. Um, it's, uh, it's it's tough work, and. Thunder, you um, you concentrate on the voice of nature in your surroundings, looking for orchids within five miles. And about a 20-minute 20, 20 walk from Oralunga, you find, through the voice of nature, you are provided with a location of an orchid grove. Using your spell. Good job. I do uh, I do that mo that thing where I, I jump up and I high five, but no one's around me. So I just like I'm oh. high fiving the air and I'm frozen. And well, then you come down I? to the ground. Yes. Uh, y'all, the the group of y'all would be like twenty minutes away. Damn it! I mean, from from thunder. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's... yeah, yeah, from thunder. And then let you like wait with them. Okay. Yeah, uh, I, I would think I didn't go alone. Okay, yeah, we made that's our fine. way back to Oralunga, right? Like we. Mm -hmm. like we didn't look yeah, 20 yeah, that's out fine. and then just stay there, right? The uh, the the three of y'all maybe then can go together since you're on the search committee, um, oh, yeah. and and yeah, you find orchids for everyone, should should they want one. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. You uh you pick an orchid. They're beautiful. Um, white with like a, a blue interior. Pick a couple extras just in case. Are they, they all the same them. color? They are all the same color, and as you as you pull them and, and you look at them you can see that they are white in the interior of the orchid if you know what an orchid looks like um yeah. it has um streaks of orange and purple in the interior of it um Pretty. as you bring these orchids back to the group and the, the group of you reunited oralunga so what do we do with these no clue but yeah, I, I, mean, go, I, I go. I go to the. I go straight to the vine, and I say, mm -hmm. "I have your brother." And the vine just looks at you, and uh, after a moment, oh, that's perfect. Yeah, orange or purple. Ooh, that's pretty. Orchids what? Are pretty. <laughs> then proceed. So I take a step forward, and as you take a step forward, holding the orchid. They begin to part back for you. <laughs> oh, oh, I, got, oh. I got an orchid from from one of them, and I start walking. Believe that works. Well, I try and fly. I try and fly, but I don't lift the orchid. Yeah, uh, well, you you aren't able to fly. You're still held back at your chest through like a cushion of magic, hmm. preventing you from flying. But if you when you light down and begin to walk forward, the creepers and the vines and the thorns pull back for each of you. Let's go. And uh, the group of you kind of walk up like little pilgrims, holding your <laughs> holding your flowers like candles, as you um, sanctuary as you as you move forward. Sing some sort of cult song. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and and as you as you reach the top of this staircase, another twenty feet or so, you're now on a a ten foot wide landing on the first level. And it gives you a beautiful view of the river below you. You can see the convergence far off in the distance. You can see the shadows of the Ibris village. And How many hexes um, have we unlocked from this viewpoint? Uh, none. To, uh, to your left and to your right, you can see more stairs that lead up to the, um, the second level. And I would like a perception check from all of you as you kind of gather your bearings on this landing and see what, what's in front of you. Bruh. <laughs> oh. Um, what, what do I see for Hobbyorn? <laughs> the uh, the group of you 
Um, not Hobbjorn. But the rest of you see <laughs> a, another relief above you, kind of in, in your view. This relief is about 15 feet above you. And there are several different things carved into this relief from left to right. You see a magnificent triceratops with a lizard hanging on from its center horn. You can see a, a swallow in flight and it's carrying a little coconut in its talons. Let me reset the music. Um, you see, and, and you see a snake with a feather on its head, like a native American. And you see a monkey holding a turtle and an Iblis with a palm leaf in its beak extending outwards and a, a human, a man that is currently eating a frog. Hmm. None of those was used as a weapon this time. And um, anyone that is proficient or I guess none of you are proficient in investigation. Uh, you can all you can all roll me an investigation check. Come on, baby. I have a plus six in it. It's not proficient. Yeah, you you can all roll me. No. Yeah. Oh. That was a... yeah. Oh, somebody get that was not me. <laughs> the last one. <laughs> Bye. Oh. Uh. Doesn't even running, show running. up green because the minus one. Wow, that's so sad. Uh, several <laughs> of you, Halbjorn, Azlos, Jin, Fayil, several of y'all can see that um, the the um, the snake with the feather resting on top of its head is um, kind of the central focus of this relief. Um, it is carved more elaborately and more delicately than any of the other inscriptions here. It certainly seems to have been the most important part of this um, of this relief. So we're looking Ventus, for an what Indian. kind of feathers that? Could... What do I roll to figure that out? Uh, you could roll a nature check. And so I, I know it's coming, but I'm going to take like a test Dang step it. up the staircase to see if I get the resistance or not. Um... Let me see. The Yeah, you can see that um, as you attempt to step upwards, the um, the step, the stone below you, Jin, begins to crumble into gravel beneath you as it falls down below. Um, hey, Bob, you are. Uh, those aren't vines. Back. Okay, jump back. Yeah, I, I definitely don't proceed, but I'm like, I think the stakes are rising, guys, so. And as you step backwards and get off from the steps, you can see the stone magically begin to reassemble itself as the stone stairway now looks whole once again. Do I know what kind of feather that is? Sorry. Oh, oh, sorry. Sorry. Um, yeah, you would uh, you would recognize that to be the the feather of what appears to be um, a a parrot. You believe? Where the that's a, a parrot, parrot feather? I think. Where the hell are we gonna get a feather of a parrot? I pluck one of my feathers and I just give it to all of you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are you? Hobgorn, you kind of squint at him. <laughs> <laughs> well, may maybe you just need a bird's feather. You're like an eagle or a hawk or something. Yeah, I want to like walk up and like touch Ooh, my No, no, no. Give him the, give the, the next... feather. Oh, I, I, give <laughs> I give him this feather. The magic, the magic feather. feather. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it. <laughs> yes, you, you pass I, it. I see, I see you want put it. off by the fact that everyone's telling me I want it, and, it's like, <laughs> and they called it the feather, and so I noticed there's something magical about it, and I'm like, uh... Mm -hmm. It's but, awesome. It's a Pegasus feather. None of you guys have used it since I've been with you guys, so if it can't be that awesome... You don't want it. You don't want it. 
Can't exactly. be that awesome if you're not using it, I'm just saying. Right. Uh, you're smoking snake venom I mean, and you're not you using this shit. On there and then go, then go check for parrots. I don't know how you find a, fuck, a freaking parrot. Enjoy. Thunder, do you have anything up your sleeve? I already cast it. Locate animals or plants. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Thunder... Oh, holding. I want to create an illusion of a parrot feather that matches the one on the drawing. Why does that have a casting? <laughs> um, Thunder, you uh, you reach out once again using the voice of nature and your surroundings. And you do learn... Um, are you searching for... I guess you're searching for actual parrots, yeah? Yeah, it would have to be an actual mm -hmm. parrot. Yeah, and you do locate several living macaws within a mile of the ziggurat. Um, while you are kind of grounding yourself as to where they might be located, Halbjorn, you create the illusion of a feather um, in your hand. And I guess it's just like a fake... A fake feather, yeah? Yeah. Um, and it, it's just kind of resting in your palm. A beautiful red and blue feather. Holding. Hold. And in your other hand is the orchid. This says an object, but it says a 20 foot radius. Could I create multiple objects with it? Right, you can create an image of multiple objects. It says an object. So you want to create more than one? I want to create enough feathers for everybody. Um, or just try it for yourself, and if it works, then. Remember, I can only do this other thing one time. Hmm. Um. So, I think that with the wording of the spell, an object would be a feather, but you could also create a parrot. Ooh. Okay. Can we all touch the parrot as we walk across? <laughs> yeah, I don't know how that would work. I, I thought that you were going to uh, to make it real. Yeah, but Did then... Did he do that? And then you'd have multiple feathers from that singular parrot. And then you just... Yeah, but can you make a parrot Kill a the poor parrot. <laughs> hey, we don't uh, have to kill it. You can just bridge. take off feathers. <laughs> just pluck it. Yeah, I, I, yeah I pluck fuck my it. Feathers. I'll, make, I'll, I'll make a parrot. <laughs> Illusion. Make it real, and then I'm going to pluck mm -hmm. a bunch of feathers off of it and hand them out to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, uh, you create the illusion of a parrot. And um, you can see the illusion in front of you, and kind of with a twist of your wrist, you snap it into reality as this illusion goes from um, incorporeal to corporeal. And the parrot, now a living, breathing parrot, you quickly grab it and well, begin I'm to pluck it, feathers. I created the oh, image, excuse me. So definitely excuse it. me. <laughs> and then you just kind of <laughs> and grab some feathers off, hand them out. And then release the parrot and to it live its parody as it's, life. As it well, as it flies off, the illusory reality. See, this is where I was confused. This is that object. Oh, it remains bad. real for one minute, and uh, but it doesn't so soon say it that whatever you interact with disappears. So it just says that object, right? Um. It says the object remains real for one minute. So I think after that, it would just turn back into... It would stay a parrot, but then a, an illusion for the next nine minutes. Right. That's confusing. Yeah. And then it That'd disappears. I don't think they meant for this to allow me to summon a parrot. <laughs> 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 I don't think that's yeah. the intent of the spell. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. And then I take the feather and try to walk through, walk up. Uh, yeah. Um, are you still holding the orchid? Sure. Yeah, I guess I don't want to 
I don't want the thorns. Gotta hold the Osip, uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. You watch as you step forward, holding a feather in one hand and the orchid in another. You watch as both the creepers and the thorns continue to pull away from you, and the stone steps no longer erode beneath you. As you are able to slowly, you move your way upwards, um, along and, and rise about 20 feet. As you continue to do so, the air is becoming crisp, and your vantage point is becoming even farther. Um, almost so high that it's kind of hazy now, you know, you get with elevation. Because you are now a good 50 feet up in the air. Um, which is nothing to scoff at, as the wind is now kind of beginning to pick up. You have left the humidity completely um, as you walk forward with your two, your two objects. And oh, I'm guessing... Going... Oh, I'm sorry. Continue. I was going to say, so that is a permanent in real life feather. Because if you still need the orchid and the feather's going to go away. No, the feather then... stayed. The parrot itself okay. turned back into a loose. Okay. I pulled this one it off is... while it was real. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. And then it stayed He's real? Breaking. I, I'm, I'm happy with saying the feathers continue to be real it was okay. the feather, okay. it was the it was the parrot that was turned from illusion to from reality illusion. Okay. right okay, so i just want to make real. sure so halbjorn you <laughs> can make an illusion of a giant stack of gold and then make it real and then remove <laughs> or some remove of the, the pieces <laughs> yeah. boom aslos rich again dude Jen, uh, shit. yeah Jin and aslos minds are spinning with the possibilities <laughs> they just saw from this new dwarf that joined their Jen, party we, we've done it again <laughs> we have buddy. got to be able to make money off this somehow <laughs> we did it again Jin. we're rich it's just so like funny. our gambling ring Bile definitely shakes her head at all that we're saving the world, Jen. <laughs> We're gonna get plenty of money. Okay. Sure you'll get what about your retirement plan, Fail? <laughs> I mean, I, I'm still young. I'm gonna have to work. I gotta have work to do. I have a pension. You're not coming on my boat if you don't have a retirement plan. <laughs> <laughs> you have a responsibility. That's a requirement you on my boat. <laughs> Everything <laughs> else she's ignoring, <laughs> like it was no What's big deal. What's your credit score, Fail? Mm, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll work on that. And uh, the group of you. Follow Halbjorn as you ascend <laughs> upwards on this beautifully ancient ziggurat. Um, as you continue upward, you can see another relief carved into the stone above you. You see several things carved into this wall from left to right. A monkey that is laying on the stairs. A monkey that is facing upward the stairs on all fours. A monkey that is facing up the stairs with a lit torch in its hand and a monkey facing down the stairs. Um, you can see that the monkey laying down has its mouth wide open. And I will put this in the chat for all of you. Investigation roll. The monkey uh, wants you to give it a good berry. I'm looking for a monkey. <laughs> oh, oops. This is in Druidic. <laughs> Let me change that so that all of you can see this. There you go. Um, and um, you can see that the you reach the second landing, the second story landing with this relief up in front of you. There are steps um, that are 20 feet long and they rise another 12 feet. And you can see very clearly that these stairs, this last set of stairs, are in actually excellent condition. Um, they aren't nearly as eroded, ruined, or abandoned as the steps below that you had to climb up. Um, but you can see that these stairs are covered, not in vines, but in poisonous snakes. That are slithering over them they create a same kind of blockage that the vines and the thorns were creating for you below but now they are living hissing and full of venom so with that i have like my feather in like one end orchid in the other and i'm gonna pull a torch out of my bag and then ask thunder to light it for me 
I do. Okay. And I kind of want to approach forward just like the monkey's doing. Kind of approach the snakes. As you begin to approach forward, you watch as the snakes begin to turn to you, mouths open, ready to strike. As you kind of approach the, the entry to this stairwell. I investigate all the images Rude. and I look for whichever <laughs> one s- stands out the most. Um, Looks carved more intricately. Sure. And with that excellent investigation skill check, you would see that the most care, um, the most focus has been played into the monkey that is laying down. So I point at I that think back. I think of the original saying with the monkey striking the snake with the flower. I feel like they don't like the orchid. Ooh, just, this, good call. This, this could just it. that could be a random thing. I'm going to lay down and try crawling up the stairs. <laughs> like Exorcist as you style? lay down and crawl up the stairs, like <laughs> like that, <laughs> um, slowly. Oh god! You um the the snakes <laughs> the um. The snakes notice you. They don't part for you, but they also don't aggressively poise themselves to strike like they did at Aslos. They are watching you and waiting. Uh, I would say, Jen, maybe you should go because you're is your mouth open immune to poison. I'm not. Vincent. I thought you were going to say he's, he, he's the one that looks the most like the monkey. I don't Can I know. open my mouth? What do they do? <laughs> as you open your mouth, you watch <laughs> as a snake kind of moves forward to you and attempts to enter it, enter your mouth. Nice. Um, and I need a con saving throw. <laughs> nice. Uh, hey, I was just following what the picture said, okay? <laughs> the other ones are pretty straightforward. <laughs> I have my torch and I'm like and, slowly uh, backing down the steps like you. You can Ew. feel you feel this is almost an out of body experience, Halbjorn. <laughs> As the snake enters your mouth, you can feel it slithering down your throat. And as you feel it slithering down your throat, the group of you watch as Halbjorn begins to slither up the steps. Uh. And as you do so, Halbjorn, they all begin to part way for you as you slither your way up. And no. you you kind of come to once again coughing and wheezing, but you are at the top of the landing where an entryway is I'm in front of you. I'm like, guys, just lay down and let the snake in your mouth. Can I just like follow behind you? No, you're next to the or... no. no. Uh, almost immediately after him, the snakes begin to swarm up the path p- behind him. All right, let's get this over with. It's really not that uh, bad. It looks really fucking bad. No, it's really I bad. I just, really for our I just go for it. I just go for it. Ventus, you pull yourself I down really like... and kind of go up to where the snakes are slithering, and you open your mouth. And I need a con saving throw as right, a snake. I already, I already did. Oh, as a snake <laughs> approaches and attempts to slither in, and it's the same strange out-of-body experience. You feel the snake begin to fill your throat and slither down your body. And as it does so, you slither up the steps, um, not disturbed at all by the poisonous snakes in front of you. And before you know it, you're at the top. Jen, the same happens to you. The snake slowly enters your mouth and slithers down your throat. And you slither up towards the top. And together, the two of you <laughs> slither upwards. And as yeah. you reach the top, the two of you are coughing and trying to catch your breath as you stand. I'm and softly, and softly sobbing. I no, I'm... I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, trying, I'm, like, I'm trying to spit out, like, any extra snake. Yeah, anything. and it, it's as though nothing ever was inside of you. There, you, you feel nothing now. I need an adult. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta go for it, guys. And, uh, Aslos, you do the same. You bring your giant body down, <laughs> and you feel as a I snake... Need to, I imagine three of them just crawling. <laughs> <laughs> they <laughs> fill up your throat as you slither up towards the top. And Aslos is like, they kind of taste good. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he eats one. Oh, this, is a de- this is one of those delicacies, dude, huh? <laughs> you, uh, you are at the, the summit of Warlunga. 
imagine I get to the top and I'm like, guys, it's not even that bad. Jesus Christ, you need to eat more people. That's what I was saying. <laughs> I don't even need people, but like, that wasn't that bad. Yeah, and, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, mm -hmm. I'm gonna wall shape into a monkey, and then I'm gonna okay. cut down with my mouth open. <laughs> and then throw up. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... Meter feet, foot, meter feet, you got lucky. You uh, you hardly hold this the snake down <laughs> as you begin to choke. But <laughs> the <laughs> snake <laughs> the snake enters your body. Like the tail you, comes out and I swallow it back down. <laughs> <laughs> as you slither up, reaching the top as well. And Fayo, you're the only one left yeah. at the bottom. I kind start I kind start nudging Ventus. I was like, "How much you will bet she throws the bottom?" <laughs> <laughs> I, I get yeah, I get out whatever off. like yeah, uh, that I have in my pocket. We're all like waving at her up here, like, "Come on!" <laughs> and it's fun, uh, just try it. Fail. I need a con save from you. I'm not on my computer, so I need you to tell me what you roll. Twenty. Yeah. A twenty. Nice. Seven. You uh. No, <laughs> she had to roll. She had to roll. <laughs> oh. I want someone to tell. What happened? I want to know. You roll, yeah, roll you gotta roll a con. I need a con yeah, save from you. One. Yeah, oh. there it comes. Twenty-one. Okay. You uh you last but not least get down on your stomach Just and watch as there. the uh as the snake enters your th your mouth and begins to slither down your body. And um you pretty cleanly view yourself slithering upwards as the group of you watch Fael also <laughs> crest the top of this ziggurat. And together, the group of you now are at the the highest landing. You can see the entire jungle below you. Um, it's a beautiful view, and the wind is is howling around you, as you are now probably seventy feet up in the air, looking over the um, Raptua below you. There are no more staircases here at the landing. Instead, there is a large doorway in front of you. That um, that houses a single stone slab of a door. Paul George's adrenaline right now is like really high, so he's like kind of feeling uh, like good, but also like on edge. Mhm. Mm <laughs> Just makes sense like, to me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's he's a little hyped. Guns. Yeah, I'm like, dude, wow. that shit was wild. A, this place <laughs> is fucking weird, guys. <laughs> Uh, are there any inscriptions or anything on the door? No. As you approach it, it magically begins to slide open for you. Oh. I walk in. And the group of you enter. You find yourselves in a in a beautiful chamber, in the same Mesoamerican style of the Aztecs. There are multiple lit braziers that fill the chamber not only with warmth but with an orange glow that bounces off of the columns inside of it you can see that in the center of this room is a large platform of sorts but the chamber itself is empty there is a large altar in the back of the room and you can see behind it is a large like um entryway a, a large threshold that is shrouded in darkness and as the group of you begin to fill the chamber you can see movement begin to emerge from the darkness and uncoiling itself okay. and bringing itself into view is a giant serpent-like creature it rises to about 10 feet tall and fills the chamber in front of you and you can see that this serpentine creature is unusual it hosts almost a human-like face as it looks Baltimore? over the group of you <laughs> and as you stare back at it you see it give you a soft smile and in a deep voice that reverberates around the chamber it says to you welcome to Oralunga. Can, can I get a vibe check from this guy? Do we sense dread? <laughs> uh, Mystique. Okay. Are you the uh, oracle? You're not gonna crawl in our mouth, are you? No, 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 no. I am the oracle. 
the Oracle of Oralunga. You have done well to reach this place. It has been a long time since I have had visitors. What is this place? A fallen city, once very proud and very large. But it has since fallen into abandonment. And it is now where I keep my residence as the Oracle. I get out of wild shape and I ask, uh, who do you speak for? Who are you the Oracle of? And, um, he, the, the, the Oracle slightly bends down to, to meet your gaze. Some questions are better left unanswered. Who's to say this is one of those questions? Perhaps an oracle or an arbiter. Would you like a good berry? And <laughs> the oracle looks at the good berries you offer it, and uh, it eats one. I do a little yes. So, what brings a group of you to the Oracle? You are not the blood of Raptua, except you. And he kind of gestures to you, Thunder. I wave. We weren't necessarily seeking you out, but we saw this cool ass building and decided to come check it out. But we are looking for some information. We also saw a huge spider the other day. Ah, yes. Yeah, he asked us not to kill him. And did you? Absolutely did not. not. This is wise. Why? Do you know his purpose? I know vaguely of his purpose. I know that he has been here for a very long time. A very, very long time. Not as long as Oralunga, but as long as I have been here. In fact, longer, I believe. Do you know the one he's looking for? I do not. I don't know if anyone does truly until they know that they are the one that he is looking for. You say you come requesting information. What is it that you are seeking? Look around, it's like, we're, we're trying to find... Uh, right? The, the, we need to find the... We seek the source of power totem. for the Yanti. Yes. I don't want to say spirit totem out loud, I'm like, trying to like... <laughs> A source of power for the wanty. Well, this is a complicated question. The serpent that gives them the power. I see. Unfortunately, I do not know such an answer. But I might know of those who do. My eyes perk up. Oh. Well, if you can provide us with any information that you have that could help us on our journey, we would, we would appreciate it. I am guessing that you are enemies of the Wanti. I believe the entire world is enemies of the Wanti. <laughs> They're the enemies yes. of us. In that case, I feel comfortable sharing this with you. Before the one T were here in Raptua, there were gods, our gods, nine of them. They were the spirits of the forest and the waterfalls and the volcanoes of everything of nature here. Our people worshipped them freely. 
different people for different gods. The Raptuans, far and wide, called these gods the trickster god. When the one T rose to their power many centuries ago, the trickster gods were hunted and killed by the one T. But the god is not so easily slain. Even though their bodies were killed, their spirits remain here in the jungles of Raptua. And they are trickster gods for a reason. These aren't wholly happy beings. And I know that these spirits deeply wish revenge upon the one team. If your purpose is to destroy them, the one team, and then perhaps you could find allyship in the trickster gods and their spirits. They would know how to help you. And is there one, someone nearby? Trickster gods have their temples across Raptua. Like I said, different people worshipped different tricksters. For example, here in the river valleys, the Ibris worshipped a trickster god by the name of Papa Zato. So that the and temple that we found uh, in a different part of the jungle, that was, that was the temple to the trickster god? Almost certainly. And he kind of moves out of the way to reveal another final large relief behind him. Fuck yeah. The trickster gods. Do if you, you could find it? each of their temples and awaken each of their spirits, they would certainly want to help you gain revenge upon the wanty. Isn't this one of them? I don't uh, know if they like me. Do you have any information on how we can gain access into the inside of the temple? We've gotten through the front door, but... Ah. Uh, I believe if anyone would know, it would be the constructors of that temple. The Ibri. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I, well, I, I point our... at the top left one, and I say, is this that one's temple? Oh, Are you the oracle of this trickster god? And the oracle smiles at you. No, I am honored. I am what they call a naga. I am not natural to this world. I was created. I am a construct with a very specific purpose by a very specific creator. Who created you? And the naga smiles at you once more. When I feel you are ready to know, I will make sure that you know. Do you have an a, do you have an email? <laughs> I'm sure you, you will find. Phone? I'm sure you will find my ziggurat once again. Now that you have visited me here, I will not subject you to the trials that took you this day to complete. Thank God. You can visit me freely. And I will be happy to answer what I can. I but, I do like <laughs> but do know, due to the circumstances of my creation, there are questions I am inhibited to answer to you. It is not my choice, but my creator's. Can You're a pretty you tell cool us naga. What the questions are? Just not answer them. That is what I have been having to do. And he kind of looks knowingly at Thunder. My creator will not allow me to speak of them until they know that you are okay for me to speak of them too. All right, My creator has been working for nearly a thousand years to their goal. It cannot be ruined now. 
I, uh, I lowly but loudly enough for him to hear, I say, a large you? And I look for, like, any kind of, like, facial reaction to that. <laughs> you get nothing in return. Damn, he's good. Baby Killer says what? <laughs> <laughs> and in his infinite wisdom, there is no what. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, with that, we will end our session. <laughs> I, I go and I dab him up because he's about to win. So we know where one of these temples are. We gotta find the other eight. Yeah, we definitely gotta. To, we're about to figure out what this is all gonna be about. I said we do right. Yeah, rest up, do whatever we gotta do. Oh, we have to man. talk to the storks first. Oh, yeah, yeah. definitely talk to the storks first. They're, yeah, they're gonna tell sure. us how we get in, so we have to talk to them. Ooh, I get that nice so, piece, too. So the, that they were all mad about not giving you, Ventus. You think so you the snake one? we found was definitely I, the truth. I'll make it up to it. Do I give them my feather? What snake? <laughs> or the, 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 or the, the guy that asked us not to kill him. Yeah, well, the spider. Oh, the spider. spider. Spider, sorry. Is he one of these? It is no. Okay. I mean, I don't know. Well, these are just representations of the trickster gods. I mean, he could be uh, a I guardian. Wanna see, I want to say this know. trickster god. This guy looks like he's from Monsters Inc. I mean, who's yeah, to say school. that? Who's to say that they they're and uh, or whatever looks like this them? This looks like Floatzel. I know, uh, I know I said we'll end the session, but y'all can roll an insight check. There's another one on here that you've already kind of encountered in some way. Damn it. This one this one looks like Crow Gunk. <laughs> oh, uh no it does. <laughs> it kinda does. What a way to end it. Uh what a way to end. Uh all the way now dude. Uh, <laughs> Halborn, you recognize one of the names. Wongo. Dude, it's got a bit of fat minute since we've seen it eroded. Oh, <laughs> wait, Wongo's in this area because whenever uh, Aslos did his little speak to the bear thing, it told us that there was a monkey thing. There was a Wongo. it was Wongo. It told us that Wongo was here. I think this says beware of Wongo. Beware yep. of Wongo. We gotta fuck him up. <laughs> No, we, we want the, we we their help. Tell them we're going to destroy the Wan T, and I think you'll like us. Uh, yeah. Yeah, are we supposed to ask them for help? We just enter. We just. We just enter every temple saying, man, I just want to kill all the Wan T. <laughs> and then they just like. Damn. Open the doors and like, yeah, just been talking about it. <laughs> yeah, we just walk right in. Like, they're all like, man, I really want to kill the Wan T. They open the doors. Dude, the Wan T like, sucks. Come here, brothers. Yeah. Bye, Kyle. Look at this face. Bye, Kyle. Like a Wango. <laughs> Wango. Wango. <laughs> Wango. Look at this face. Wango. Hey, I vote Wango. we go to, to Wango first. We, we skip the storks, we go to Wango first.